everyone, it's Robin and welcome to The Robin's Nest. Today on my channel, I'm going to be stepping outside my comfort zone a little bit and making a cake that is slightly more complicated than I'm used to. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm really excited because today I'm going to be attempting to make a Chunky the Carnivore from the movie The Croods. Now, I just watched the new movie The Croods 2 and it was so funny. I loved it so much and it was so bright and colorful. I knew I had to take something from it and Chunky is my favorite. He is so cute. I just love him and I want him so I'm going to cake him. So let's get into it. So today we're using five layers of delicious chocolate cake that we need to level out before we can start stacking and filling. So I'm just going to take my cake leveler which I've already preset to the height that I want and we're just going to trim these down and then we're going to save our cake tops in case we need to make some cake pop mixture later to finish forming Chunky's body. So now that we've finished leveling our layers, it's time to get these stacked and filled. And so I know how I want my cake to be built up, I found a couple of cute little pictures of Chunky here that I'm going to be using as a reference point. Aren't they cute? Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is take a little bit of icing and we're going to use this on our cake board to act as a little bit of a glue to attach our first layer of cake. Then we're going to take our first layer. I'm going to apply that a slightly off center and then we're going to stack each of our layers on a bit of an angle for about the first three layers and then the next two are going to go directly on top of those. Then I'm going to take a skewer and drive that straight down through our cake and that's going to help lock those layers into place before we pop it into the fridge. Okay, so now that I've reached my third layer, I've noticed that because I'm stacking my cake on a slight angle, it is getting a little bit heavy on one side, so we need to make sure to get that weight supported. So what we're going to do is take a few wooden dowels, we're going to measure them down to the height that we need, and get these inserted and drove down into our cake board. Then I'm going to take a cake board, which is slightly smaller than the cake that we're working with, we're going to apply it on the top of this third layer, and then we can finish stacking and building up our cake. Okay, so now that I've finished stacking up my cake, I want to take one last and final support and drive it down through the center of my cake and into my cake board to really lock these layers into place. Then we're going to pop it in the fridge to chill for at least one hour to allow our cake a little bit of time to firm up and really solidify these icing layers before we do any sort of carving. So I finished chilling my cake and it has firmed up nicely, so it should be really easy to work with now and we can start carving. Now looking at my reference picture, I think the best first step is to decide where we want the body to end and the head to begin and just start carving the body shape. And then once I've decided how I want that to be positioned, we can go ahead and start carving the head. So I think I'm going to start here between the third and the fourth layer and we're going to work our way down shaping the body as we go. Okay, that looks pretty good so far. I'm really happy with how the body is taking shape, but I'm not sure about the head. I think I want to add just a little bit of cake scraps to the top so that way I can make sure that the head is going to be big enough because I don't want that to look too small. So once I finish doing that, we're going to carve out the rough shape of the head. Then I'm going to move on to the finer details like shaping his eyes and his cheeks and whatnot. So to get this cake covered up, we're going to be using the same vanilla American buttercream we used to fill our layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my small offset spatula and we're going to use this to apply our buttercream to the larger, easier to cover surface areas of our cake first. And then we're going to switch over to some flexible plastic smoothers to get in all those nooks and crannies.
Okay, so I got him all covered up and he is almost ready for some fun and we just need to make him some legs. So I'm gonna pop him in the fridge to chill for just a few minutes to allow him to crust over and we're gonna get to mix in some cake pop mixture. So I've gotten myself a large bowl and I've broken down all of my cake scraps into a fine crumble. Next I'm gonna take a small scoop of my buttercream and we're gonna add this to our crumble mixture and mix it up really, really well. Now I'm going to get in here with some clean hands and we're going to mix this up as good as we can. Once your mixture is fully combined, then it's ready for modeling. So for his legs, we're just going to make some very simple sausage shapes out of our cake pop mixture. And I'm going to sort of press them onto the cake until I'm happy with their shape. Then we're going to make a whole bunch of teeny tiny adorable little cake pops for each of his toes. Well guys, what do you think of those? Look at those adorable little toes. Aren't they so cute? I just love them. I want to eat them up. And I will. But first we need to finish decorating them. So the next thing we need to do is finish our crumb coat on his front and back legs. Then we're going to pop them in the fridge to chill. And we're going to leave them in there for about 15 to 20 minutes. And when we come back, we can start covering him in some fondant. So Chunky is firmed up nicely and I have a piece of white fondant here that's ready to be rolled out and start covering him up. Now I think my best course of action is going to be to divide up my work and cover him section by section because if I cover him entirely in fondant all at once, the fondant is going to dry out as I'm working on it and it's going to make it more and more difficult to texturize it as I go. So I think this is going to be my best course of action and give me the best result. So we finished covering Chunky in fondant and I think he looks fantastic. Mind you, he does look a little bit thicker than he's supposed to, but that's okay. He just looks like he's been eating lots of cake. He's still cute. <laughs> All right, so we just have a little tiny bit of fondant work left to do. I need to make some ears. We need to give him his eyes and his nose, some teeth and his tail too. And once I'm finished with all that, then we can start to add some color. Alright guys, we are almost done. All we have left to do is paint. I just love him so much already. I can't wait to see him when he's finished. I hope he turns out amazing for you guys. Alright, now I will say an airbrush would probably make this job a little bit easier, but we're going to be using a good old fashioned paintbrush and some gel food coloring. So I'm going to get this guy finished and I can show you guys what it looks like.
And ta-da, here he is guys. Chunky the Carnivore Cake is finally done. And look at him, isn't he amazing? I'm so in love. Now, I was so apprehensive to make this cake. I was absolutely terrified. I really didn't think I was gonna be able to do it. But I took it step by step and one piece at a time. And I am so happy with how it turned out. And I really hope you guys all like it too. If you did, you guys know what to do. Leave a big thumbs up and leave me lots of love in the comment section too. And if you haven't done so already and you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you receive a notification every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!